ratios, and proportions. Before we dive into these problems, let's go ahead and quickly review the cross product property. Given the ratio A to B equal to the ratio C to D, which form a proportion, we can conclude that A times D is equal to B times C. Now let's see how we use this to determine whether or not we have a proportion. If it is true that 18 times 4 is equal to 12 times 6, then we have a proportion. Sometimes we deal with larger numbers, sometimes we deal with smaller numbers. Regardless, you can use a calculator as needed. So in this case, for example, you take 18 and multiply by 4, we get 72. And if you then take 12 and multiply by 6, you also get 72. Again, you can verify on a calculator, 12 times 6, 72. And that allows you to conclude that yes, we have a proportion because both cross products are equal to each other. 1 times 16 equals 16. 8 times 2 equals 16. Both equal? Yes, this is a proportion. 18 times 1, 18. 7 times 2, 14. No, two different cross product values, therefore this is not a proportion. Let's go ahead and skip over to a section where we actually have to figure out one of the missing values. So given this equation here, we will go back to the cross product rule. We have 15 to F is equal to 45 to 21. So 15 15 to F is equal to 45 to 21. Okay, so let me just adjust these fractions. So now we're going to solve using algebra in this first example. We'll go ahead and use the product, cross product rule. I'll paste this here and go ahead and insert the values. So normally, as you're working this out on paper, you'll just go ahead and rewrite the values. Here I'm taking 15, multiply that by 21, and then I will take F and multiply by 45. So when we simplify this equation, 15, times 21 is 315. This would turn into 315 and f times 45 can just be written as 45f. Now recall to solve this one step equation because these are being multiplied and we're trying to isolate the f, we need to divide both sides of the equation by 45. So in short we are dividing 315 by 45 which results in 7. Therefore, 7 equals f would be our final answer. The value of f is 7 using the cross product rule. Now the shortcut to this would simply be to take this cross product 15 times 21, 15 times 21, and the result which is 315, you divide by that third value which is 45. We now take 315 divided by 45, and sure enough, we get an answer of 7. So again, using the shortcut, 16 times 1, 16, divided by 4 is 4. And most of the problems in the room that are remaining in this topic are as are the same as these first few we just did. So go ahead and continue the process. Once you get into the challenge section, here you'll need to recall your use of distribution in algebra. So if you were to solve this here, you could use the property of distribution by multiplying these two, that means taking 30, multiplying it by p, 30p, taking 30, multiplying by 18, and on the other side of the equal sign, multiplying these two values, 24 and 25, and then solving that two-step equation. 
that would be one method of solving this. Another way to think about this is ignore this p plus 18 for a minute. Just think of that as one big missing value. If we take 24 times 25, to use the shortcut we did earlier, 24 times 25, that is 600. We then take 600 divided by this third value, which is 30. We divide this 600 by 30, you get 20. In other words, p plus 18 has to equal 20. This has to simplify to 20. What value of p will give us a value of 20 up here? 2 plus 18 would give us 20. Therefore, p is equal to 2. That's another way to think about doing these extra challenge problems. All right, hope this helps. Remember to email me if you have questions or reply via Google Classroom.